Hi everyone. On the bench today, some of you might recognize what this is. This is a Yazoo FT101 AA Amateur HF Transceiver. And no, this is not in for repair. I happened to go to one of the uh, local flea markets and found this sitting on the ground. After talking to the uh, guy that which had a bunch of stuff for sale. This was the only piece of ham equipment he had. Some other was CB equipment. Um, I asked him about this piece. And he said, there's a price tag on it. So anyway, I went ahead and purchased it from him. And it's missing uh, a couple of knobs. Missing the upper and lower covers. It's missing the PA cover the audio board, the relay, and the filter board. So, you know, other than that, it doesn't look too bad. The, the front looks like it's in great shape. Um, it'd be a bad rig at all. Uh, it's also missing all the two final tubes and the uh, driver tubes. The driver tube. Um, 12BY7 6JS6Cs is what the finals are so I work on a lot of these radios so I keep a lot of parts in stock although I do not have the knobs I do have a few extra boards and I have the relay and I have the tubes um, this is what the filter board looks like I have a couple of these and one thing you'll notice about this one that's a little different instead of being a CW filter it is an AM filter so this makes the AM receiver sound a whole lot better and to install this you do have to make a little bit of modification to the mode switch you have to rearrange some wiring so that it goes through the CW position when it's in AM mode but you know, that's no problem. We have an accessory plug in this, which is uh, rare to find in a, what I call a parts rig, and also have the power cord that goes with it. Now if you notice underneath of it, everything is pretty much intact, is what I can Fine, I cannot find no components missing, but the metal cover that goes under the bottom here is also missing. The ground strap is still here. Now, when you're working on these type of radios, a lot of things that you find with them, if they're, you know, the receiver is down, first place to check, it's on the back of it here, there's a lamp. And you can see the cover has been broken off, but the lamp is still in place. This lamp is in between the radio and the antenna port. So a static electricity or lightning comes into the system. This bulb is going to take the blunt of it. And a lot of times it'll blow. A lot of times it takes out other components too, but you know at least there is a little bit of protection in these things. Uh, other things to look for is like, uh, you can see this. Big uh, wear around resistor here has been overheated and someone has disconnected and it's just hanging there. There's a couple of more underneath the uh, driver tube up here, right below this uh, trimmer board. There's a couple in there. Um, they generate quite a bit of heat and underneath here also is one of those big rectangular mica capacitors um, one of those that has the uh, colored dots on it to tell what it is we find them shorted a lot um, you know and it's due to the heat that's inside this thing other than that other places to look you know there's a couple resistors here cathode resistors and your uh, screen resistors is another thing to look for
another place to look when it's not receiving correctly it's just down in here you can see there's a green edge connector down there you can see that right there that's where the uh, receiver board is down here and there's a little uh, fit transistor on that it goes bad so that's another place to check um, um, you know also the relays and the uh, power supply board and we'll just take the power supply board and just lift it right out the screws have been taken out of it already so you need to check the power supply board and make sure uh, all your voltages are there um, you can see you got quite a bit of electrolytic caps up here that could be replaced that was called different problems throughout the radio this also sets your bias on your finals um, amplifier stage you need to make sure all your voltages are there what makes these radios pretty nice to work on is that um, you can see the boards are modular a lot of the boards just plug in you know you get tarnishing on these little fingers and that causes intermittent connections also down on the receiver socket in there that these connect to you need to clean those I don't think out of the uh, many years that I've been working on 101's that I have ever replaced a set of main filter caps but maybe one time they've used some pretty decent caps in here and they seem to last everyone I ever check is pretty much intolerance another thing uh, when you're working on something like this remember there's always high voltage back here in this uh, PA stage so if you're working on one of these you know you do so at your own risk as lethal voltage is in there and it can kill you so my goal is um, so I got enough parts to put this back together other than the, the, uh, the sheet metal but you can go on eBay and you can find the sheet metal you can find knobs you can find face plates you can find just about every part um, a lot of these eBay sellers they'll get this radio and they'll strip it down completely and sell it piece by piece board by board they make more money off of it than they can selling the radio for a couple hundred bucks but you know I don't like stripping things down I like repairing things so what I like to do is uh, fix this radio back up now as I said I found this at a flea market so what does a radio in this shape go for at a flea market well here's the price tag $10 is all he wanted for it and as you can see the radio looks pretty good the FO works good it is missing the uh, knob off the VFO but other than that she looks very very nice could need a good cleaning So yeah, I think this is a good candidate to uh, to get working. Now someone asked in one of my previous videos if I would do a video on a 101. And to answer that question, no. It would be impossible to do a video on a 101. Um, what would be more easier to do is to do a series on the 101s. Well, there's just too much to have to cram into one video and the video would be god off alone so you know maybe we can do a series and we have a variety of problems to go through as you can see and we don't have to be in a hurry with none of these because all these radios belong to me so, uh, yeah, maybe perhaps we can do a series on the 101s.
I'm going to let you hear your comments down below on that. See what you think. Sorry about that. Air condition just came on and uh, this microphone on this camera is very sensitive. So I figured y'all didn't want to hear all that roaring in the background. So anyway, that is what a ten dollars can get you at a flea market if you're careful and you just happen to be there at the right time. So uh, you can go on Fox Tango website. I'll leave a link down in the below under the click show more tab to their service information. There is quite a bit of information on the internet about these radios. I haven't seen a lot of repair videos. In fact, I don't even know if I've even seen any repair videos on YouTube. So uh, maybe I can get a start on doing some repairing on some of these and uh, doing the little segments here and there. And we see what we can make out of it. But anyway, yes. I love these old radios there. To me, they're beautiful old radios. Um, they were very highly sought after. These radios came in, you know, from Japan. They were a lot cheaper than our American counterparts. And a lot of hams jumped on these. Uh, the downside is a lot of CBers also jumped on them because they were easy to convert to CB. So here you are with a CB with a VFO and a 100 watt output. So we find a lot of them that has been golden screwdriver. Um, as long as no stupid stuff has been done. Now I know two of those over on that side belong to hams. And two of them, I think it was the two on this side. The two, uh, there's two EXs on this side. And there's an F and an E on the other side. The two EXs was bought from a uh, hand fest for 25 bucks. And one of those came with an AM filter. I guess the guy didn't know what he really had or didn't really care. Um, a friend of mine picked them up at a hand fest and brought them to me. So, you know, I, I can't complain. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think we can have a good time working on these. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'd uh, like to hear your comments down below, and we'll catch you next time.